Oat milk with rapeseed oil, aka canola oil, which is rich in heart healthy polyunsaturated fats and is associated with good long term health outcomes like reduction in cardiovascular disease and total mortality. Almond milk with almost two teaspoons of cane sugar, which is just over half the sugar content of a cup of dairy milk. Pea milk with four teaspoons of cane sugar, sunflower oil, and natural flavors. So about the same sugar content as a cup of dairy milk. And once again, sunflower oil is also rich in those polyunsaturated fats, which lowers your risk of cardiovascular disease. Not that there's even enough of the oil added to affect your health one way or another. It's often the tiniest dose to help with texture or emulsification. And the same can be said for the flavors, which do go through safety testing before being added to food. And they put a bunch of synthetic vitamins in there to make them mimic the nutritional profile of cow's milk. How on earth is that a bad thing? And it's not even just to match dairy products, sometimes they exceed dairy products. In fact, the Ripple pea milk that he looked at actually has substantially more calcium per serving than dairy milk. So are some plant milks better than others? Sure. For example, generally speaking, soy and pea milk have a higher protein content and better mineral profiles, but that doesn't mean that all of the other ones need to be excluded entirely. And to raise concerns over less than two teaspoons of added sugar, which is actually less sugar than you'll find in dairy milk, doesn't make any sense. And similar can be said about the oils and whatnot. But the worst part of this video is that I think it could scare people away from choosing plant milks with that nutrient fortification. For people who don't consume dairy, that added calcium is really important. And without plant milks or other fortified foods or supplements, you risk inadequate intake. So I think we should promote the consumption of these fortified products, not fear monger over them.